This is the Realty Classroom Podcast, episode number 174, how to keep the wolves away from your business. Are you a real estate agent with an entrepreneurial spirit who wants to turn your job into a business without sacrificing your lifestyle, but you just can't seem to find the right plan or any plan to help you get there? Well then, hey, you are definitely in the right place. I'm Danny Griffin, the founder of The Realty Classroom and the host of this podcast. Now, to help you take immediate action, to get started in the right direction, I've created a free jumpstart course for you at freeagentgift.com. All right, let's get started. So how to keep the wolves away from your business. What wolves? Well, we'll get into that in a second. But the first point is you have to have a simple plan to acquire new business. Now, when I hearken back to the very beginning of my career, I remember the naive approach that I had to business acquisition. I mean, I knew I needed to do business with people that I didn't know. That's the first thing that I think is the big mistake in this business is that when agents go to a brokerage, that brokerage tells them, hey, let's just focus on your sphere. There's nothing wrong with that. And it's smart. But my best advice to myself back then, thinking from this perspective today, is you, Danny, need to learn how to do business with sellers who have the listings that you want to list that you don't know. And you can't rely on your sphere of influence to be a middle person to help you do that. That might be a nice bonus when that happens, but you need to figure out how to do business in that area. Think about it. Why would that not be the right advice? I mean, when Schultz started Starbucks, did he wake up and say, well, I know all my friends and family will come down to the corner store. Did he really think that that was going to sustain the early Starbucks model? Of course not. He knew that he needed to provide a product that would attract people he didn't know and have them recur with that business. So it's the same business principle. We must learn to acquire new business, period. That's true for any kind of business, but especially ours. So that leads to the second point here. In that case, think about, let's go back to a Starbucks analogy. What do they need to do? Well, they need to get coffee beans They need to source coffee beans. That's what they do. They have to go around the world to find and source the best coffee beans that they can so that they can make their product here. Well, what do we need to do? What's our equivalent of coffee beans? We need listings. That's what we need. And I know a lot of you might push back and say, well, I'm, you know, I'm new and I'm just going to do buyers. Okay, well, good. Wait in line for somebody like me to go get the listing. And then essentially you can go to work for me. And I love that. Feel free, bring your buyers to that listing. But I want to teach you all, don't wait for somebody else to acquire the coffee beans, AKA the listings. Have a simple plan to acquire sellers first. And then buyers. Now, again, this is more strategic thinking. Of course, if you have your license and you're good at at acquiring buyers, that's great. But I've seen more top producers not think this way. And the next thing you know that they want to expand and they don't want to sell any more themselves. They want to grow a business, they think. And they go out and they get all these internet buyer leads and they pawn them off to a buyer's agent, quote unquote, and they split the money and off they go. Well, all of a sudden, well, what does that have to do with acquiring listings? What does that have to do with getting the coffee beans? Nothing. It's one part of the business and a very important part. But think about this. If I go out and I have a business plan, which I do, to acquire listings, and I continue to refine that, there's not just one way. For me, it starts with expireds, then it moves to probates, right? Those are a couple of things that we would look at. If I wanted, I don't love this for my business to acquire a for sale by owner, for certain particular reasons that I don't think that's the best thing. I think that I could also call into areas within which I want to do business, try to get people information that at least has them understand I'm there, then provide further services. So there are myriad ways to acquire sellers. Now, of course, it's going to take serving them free information. Hello, internet age. That makes that really a necessity. You have to learn how to give market information to people, to ingratiate yourself, to make them aware you even exist, and then be ready to give them your plan on how you would help them once you've given them what to do for free, then how to do it. It's simple. I mean, I say it's simple. You have to create your own, but it's simple. It's a simple concept to to create information for sellers. Just do some homework. 
Don't be so lazy. Don't be so fearful. So many of you are so afraid as if, oh, that market's already taken up. But what? What? Yeah, well, she's already got the whole thing of luxury. What? I have never, I coach a lot of really good marketplaces. Palo Alto, California, Seattle, Washington, New York City. I could go on and on with my coaching clients and where they are. And there is nobody that dominates a marketplace so much, no company, no person that dominates a market so much that you can't acquire listings. So stop thinking that way, right? So the idea is, and let me just share with you. So if I go out and I acquire these listings and that's first, it allows me to use the listing as buyer marketing too. And one of the things I'm doing this podcast, and I know some of you might, oh, oh, well, you can't really be doing that well if you're doing your own open houses. I'm so leveraged with systems and great people that run those systems with me. I have time. You hear what I'm saying? I have time. So when I put my realtor hat back on, I love this business. I love being face to face, serving my seller who gave me the chance to have the listing, serving the buyer who comes in confused. I'm sitting there waiting with plans for them. I love that. So for 90 minutes on a weekend, am I really that busy where I can't do it and I can't pick up buyers? I meet buyers who want my help all the time that way. So even in a, and I'm not even talking a high volume, I'm saying if you could get one listing and you could be prepared to serve that seller by working hard at open houses and opening the door, letting people come in, be ready. Hey, thank you so much for coming to the open house. Sellers asked that I have everybody sign in. If you don't mind doing so, I would appreciate that. When you're done doing that, then you can feel free to take a feature sheet and have a look at the property. You know, this is a private property. I'm going to tell you how you can come in here and visit. It's not just free for all. It's my open house. It's my seller's home. Those are the the rules of my game. Now, I glance down and see that on my sheet, you didn't mention that you have a realtor. So here I use this listings acquisition to find out if somebody's unencumbered, they don't have a buyer's agent, and they'd like to maybe get some more information. Not work with me yet. I'm not jumping up and down. Hey, who you work with? No, 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 no. Hey, Are you folks looking for yourselves? Yes, we are. How's it going? That's a little bit rugged. Yeah, I see you running around looking at your phone. That's pretty tough. You know what? I I took some time to put together a buyer package. Here's my plan. A couple of properties that sold. So you can see what the money's buying rather than just running around and see what's for sale. Really? Boom. You see, I'm just speeding through this podcast by just telling you this is a real plan and it's simple. The first point was have a simple plan to acquire new business. Start by focusing on sellers. I love expireds. They need service. They're not easy. They have to crack. You have to crack codes with their emotions and why they didn't sell and find out if they were really motivated, what went wrong. But then once they give me that opportunity for listing, then I can go and I can use that listing for either online conversations. We get direct buyers inquiring through our website about it and open houses. So it leads to buyer business. But the real point of this is as you begin to give away information, all of you that are on social media talking about, you know, the local burger joint, I think that's great down the line. But why don't you get online and try to prospect people by giving away information about our business? How's the market asks everybody who's interested in buying or selling real estate. So that's really, again, let me just come back to this. As you're having that what to do conversation with them, no matter on social, whatever it is, talk about how the market is, talk about a seller plan, what to do. I know, oh, I can't give away my plan, then all my competitors have it. (laughs) It's just a simple plan that you can give to somebody and off it goes, right? So the idea is, as you give forward that information, you are bordering on prospecting. See, if somebody comes to my open house and they want to talk to me about whatever it is they want to talk to me about buying, I'm just simply giving away information with the potential to turn that lead who walked through the door into a prospect. And a prospect has a real why. They have a real motivation at a scale on a scale of one to 10. They're going to be a nine to 10 somewhere in the next 12 months. And they want information curated. I mean, I went out and found it organized and put forward to them. That's my value. Now they're prospected, but see, 
If I don't measure that, if I don't capture that prospect and put them on a simple list and say, well, they're looking at an average price of this, that could lead to a potential co-broke fee of this, and that could lead to a potential commission of me. Boom. They just became wildly important to my business. It's no longer some random, oh, maybe I'll call those people. What? Are you kidding me? Come on. Right in front of you, the opportunity to do what you were licensed to do and serve, here it is. Voila. And you miss that and you miss putting them up on the list so that you know Monday morning after the open house that you're trying to follow up to make sure that, you know, what questions did you have about what sold? I'd like to digitize this and put you into MLS so you get these on a regular. I'd like to also offer to take you out to see a few of your favorites once we go through this. So I have this simple list that's measured. And then as I create new ones, whether it's new sellers, whether it's new buyers, I can bubble sort them. Who's got a timing that's sooner than later? Should I be focusing more on them? Yes, I should. Should I be adding more value to them? Yes. But should I touch base with all of them? Yes. And should I touch base with all those measured and monetized prospects before leads? Absolutely. They're the ones that are engaged and they're the ones that are most likely to become a client sooner than later. See, this isn't rocket science. Let me keep going. Now, once you have all of that list that's measured and monetized and starting to move, it's becoming a predictable business. You see, you're not just trying to scrape the cream off of, well, nobody can do the open house and wanted to, you know, give me a, a, an offer today. Okay. Yeah. I want the blue moon to shine every day too, right? It doesn't work that way. You have to do this systematically and you have to build that list, monetize that list, measure that list and follow up. So the last point here is, and you got to keep the wolves away from your list and especially the wolf of your own lack of execution, you see, it's stunning to me that somebody will do this. Oh, I called a couple expireds, probates, fizbos. I called a list, a cold call list, and I, I got somewhere. Great. How's it going every week? Oh, 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 I used to do that. <laughs> Unbelievable. You do something in a simple, planned out way. It works, and then you stop. See, you got to memorialize those plans. So that's what happens, right? You got to memorialize them. Got to put them down, right? So I think that's what's really important here is that you have to be careful. Your own lack of execution is the problem. And when you do that, by the way, that's where the wolves of competition really come. Well, I was really getting along with Danny. Oh, how come he bought with somebody else? Because somebody else executed better. Somebody else valued that prospect and what they were potentially worth to them. And they served more. See, the more you serve and execute on those prospects that you work so hard to continuously get, the more loyal they are to you because the gift of reciprocity is powerful. Okay. All right. Let me summarize it this way. Execution of a simple plan to acquire new listings and use them to attract new buyers is the fastest path to the development of a predictable and sustainable real estate agent business. Now, when you begin a new relationship, you're in the act of prospecting or creating a prospective client. If you would simply build a list of those prospects and measure their potential monetary value to your business, you'd be more likely to keep the wolves away, you know, the wolves of competition, your own laziness, because you'd appreciate the more you'd be working harder. Got it? Got it. Remember, you can take immediate action and get started in the right direction with our free, simple business plan that's waiting for you at freeagentgift.com. So a lot of what I talk about is already laid out for you. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen so that you don't miss out on any of these insights each time we upload. We also broadcast our live sales training calls on Facebook and YouTube every Friday at one o'clock. You can actually see how we coach people to speak to people and new business development, right? Really powerful. What are you doing every day? Lean in. Where are you? Eavesdrop. So remember, you can turn on your page and channel notifications for the Realty Classroom, and you won't miss the reminders. We'd also appreciate it, of course, if you'd share the content with other people that need this kind of help. But remember this, and we sign off the same way every week. Nobody's coming for you. Absolutely nobody is coming for you. Nobody, not your broker, not your friends, not your family, not even me. 
I'm here trying to help, but I'm not coming for you to your business to help you. So you got to get working on that business. And of course, I will be here in the next episode to help motivate you to do just that. Thanks.